station. My greetings also to uh, Senator Mushayed Hussain uh, Sahib, a good friend, uh, the chairman of the uh, China-Pakistan Institute, and to all the distinguished participants from neighboring countries and from uh, other countries in the region. Um, I'm delighted to be here and will share a few points, uh, as you mentioned, about uh, Afghanistan's relationship with the Built and Road Initiative and Afghanistan's place in regional connectivity and uh, integration in general. I'm very happy to start uh, with the news yesterday that um, uh, the situ COVID-19 situation in Pakistan seems to be improving and that the new number of new cases is on the decline. I think this is great news as the COVID-19 pandemic has put an unprecedented burden on the people of the region and also on the systems that are supposed to deliver services to the people. And I hope that this will um, turn out to be the case for the entire region and that we will hopefully be able to at least manage this pandemic well in the coming months. And just as the virus has shown us uh, that the only way to effectively tackle this pandemic is through joint global action, the history of cooperation in our region has amply demonstrated that the only way to ensure regional economic cooperation, connectivity, and integration, and a, as a result, uh, prosperity and better living conditions for our people is through sincere and practical cooperation. Uh, and one major reason in this connection is uh, for the 40 year war uh, in Afghanistan specifically, unfortunately has been disunity and antagonisms at the regional level that have manifested themselves in proxy battles, in negative competitions inside Afghanistan that have then in turn damaged the interests of the entire region. Uh, uh, but now there seems to be a consensus for peace in Afghanistan, uh, which definitely is a necessary condition for the realization of uh, the Built and Road uh, Initiative and Vision and also all the other strategies and programs for regional cooperation and development. The larger point, however, however is that now is perhaps uh, a real chance for meaning, meaningful work on connectivity and regional economic cooperation. Uh, there is uh, consensus uh, in my view from this, uh, particularly on my experience in Pakistan and also in China and uh, uh, studying the region uh, in a um, continuous uh, way. Uh, there is consensus uh, on regional integration, on regional connectivity. There is also broad support, uh, I think, for the Built and Road Initiative uh, in the region. And uh, there is also, uh, beyond the region, keen interest globally for our region, uh, for connectivity and for uh, major projects. Uh, there is interest from the European Union, uh, from the United States. Uh, we all saw Ambassador Khalil Zad, the United States Special Envoy for Afghanistan, uh, being accompanied by the US's top official for economic engagement with the region. And I think that's an important sign. Um, and um, particularly uh, with regards to Afghanistan, I would like to put forward maybe five points uh, that we could discuss. Uh, in, the, in the discussion part. Uh, in terms of the vision, it's been very clear uh, from Afghanistan, whether um, you know, irrespective of who sits in the presidential palace, that uh, the people of Afghanistan and the government of Afghanistan want to reclaim Afghanistan's uh, true historic role and place in the region as a land bridge. Uh, especially between uh, South Asia and Central Asia. And it was in this connection that in 2017, when President uh, Mohammad Ashraf Ghani met with uh, President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Astana in the summer of 2017, that they both agreed that Afghanistan's role uh, is uh, perhaps uh, most appropriate in connecting the two key corridors of the Belt and Road Initiative, namely the, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor 
and the China, Central Asia, West Asia economic corridor. And that consensus was reached at the time. Uh, and that basically resulted in the establishment of the Afghanistan, Pakistan, China trilateral uh, dialogue at the foreign minister's level, uh, the first of which was held in, the, in December of 2017 and then subsequent ones held in Kabul and uh, Islamabad. Uh, and you mentioned the May meeting yesterday, Mustafa, at the level of deputy ministers, uh, which I think is also a preparatory uh, discussion for the next meeting of the foreign ministers. Uh, so that's been very clear. And uh, we have come down, not, it's not just at the level of uh, you know, uh, long-term vision and uh, just uh, uh, high platitudes, but there is specific agreement on Afghanistan's role in the Built and Road Initiative. Uh, the second point that I uh, wanted to uh, put on the table uh, is that uh, security is often mentioned as the main impediment, or at least the, one of the main impediments to the uh, realization of the plans uh, and strategies related to the Belt and Road Initiative uh, with regards to Afghanistan. But even there, uh, we now have, as we all know, uh, a peace process, a very serious effort, uh, perhaps the most serious and the most uh, focused effort for uh, bringing a political settlement to the war in Afghanistan in the past 20 years. There is um, a clear uh, trend of uh, international, but specifically U.S. disengagement, military disengagement from the region, from Afghanistan specifically. And it seems that that has been uh, realized and recognized by the entire region so in response, it seems to me, uh, and we, through our, our uh, think tank, uh, based in Kabul, the Heart of Asia Society, we have uh, held multiple sessions of uh, a track two dialogue focused on regional and international support for Afghan peace. It has become quite clear for us that the region, unlike the 1990s or the late 1980s, is serious uh, in support of Afghan peace. Uh, whether it's our neighbors or other key countries in the region. And obviously China, uh, China's role and Pakistan's role in all of this is extremely critical. So that is, um, uh, I think, an important uh, signal, an important trend that needs to be taken into account when we look to the future of uh, uh, regional connectivity and regional uh, economic integration. And connected to that, I, I believe that uh, there is no need to wait for the start of intra-Afghan negotiations or to wait for the uh, finalization, for the signing uh, and implementation of a peace agreement in Afghanistan. The Afghan government uh, is strongly in support of uh, regional connectivity. Uh, regional cooperation is at the center of Afghanistan's foreign policy right now. And the Taliban have as well voiced strong support for economic projects in Afghanistan, and particularly for uh, integration and connectivity with the region. And they have, as we all know, uh, benefited from uh, contacts uh, and from um, uh, visits uh, to countries in the region. And I believe that uh, uh, it now is the time, and that's my third point, uh, to start work immediately uh, to actually move away from the strategic consensus, the high level leadership decisions that have been made with regards to the Built and Road Initiative to very specific projects, because we need uh, to have people start seeing the benefits, the fruits of the decisions of their leaders. And these actions, these projects do not need to be uh, on a grand scale. Um, something that we have seen in Pakistan, for example, or, or in some other countries, they can start from, from small projects. For example, there, is a, uh, there has been an agreement on the table between Afghanistan and China since 2016, uh, and with the MOU having been signed in 2017, in early 2017, on the building of the Afghanistan-China fiber optic cable from Kasha, Kashkar uh, in China, in Xinjiang to Faizabad in uh, the northeastern uh, province of uh, Badakhshan in Afghanistan. 
And I mention this because this is uh, a region you know, that has been largely peaceful in Afghanistan. The Wakhan Corridor is uh, sparsely populated, but this is a project that will play an extremely important role in uh, Afghanistan's connectivity with the region and in uh, economic development. Telemedicine, for example, was mentioned. Uh, Brother Mustafa read the, the key takeaways from the foreign minister's video conference on the Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, strong uh, internet connectivity is key for that. Uh, E-commerce, um, communications, uh, all of that. And I think this is an area where we need to speed up action. There are specific, um, for example, other projects, uh, bigger ones. There are five projects between Afghanistan and Pakistan where the two governments, the two countries have um, reached agreement and they include uh, four uh, railway projects and uh, a motorway project. Um, and I think that one of these projects can be picked up and implementation can be, can be started. Uh, the fourth area that uh, I wanted to uh, highlight, uh, again, based on my uh, experience, something that can have a direct impact on, um, on people's support for initiatives such as the Built and Road uh, Initiative is uh, market access and facilitation uh, by China for its neighbors four countries in the region. Um, we are among friends, um, and so I will mention this. When I was ambassador to China, uh, it took us a whole year of concerted effort and knocking on doors every single day, at least every working day in the week, uh, to get um, permission, approval from the relevant authorities in China to be able to export Afghanistan's uh, world-renowned saffron to China, something that should have taken maybe two weeks or a month maximum. Um, and then uh, it was a little faster to get approval for the export of Afghan pine nuts. But these are ex just small examples uh, of uh, things that can be done immediately and market access and market facilitation uh, are among the most important, especially for uh, poor countries like Afghanistan with underdeveloped economies. Um, and then finally, I think, <clears throat> again, for a country like Afghanistan, it's critical. Uh, the, it's the question of seeking financing. Uh, Afghanistan as a, uh, as a grant receiving country is not in a position to receive uh, either big or small loans for its infrastructure projects or other projects uh, under these uh, regional integration and connectivity initiatives. So there is need for Afghanistan and its neighbors uh, to work together uh, and seek financing from private players, whether they're uh, multinational companies or national companies, and to also work with multilateral entities such as the AIIB in Beijing, the Silk Road Fund, the Asian Development Bank, and also with the European Union, uh, which has demonstrated uh, keen interest in uh, more meaningful, more action-oriented engagement with the region on connectivity and integration. Uh, so uh, I will uh, end with that and uh, be very happy to